Hi, so today's topic is on pancreatitis. Acute pancreatitis is an acute inflammation of the pancreas. The degree of inflammation varies from mild edema to severe hemorrhagic necrosis. Acute pancreatitis is most common in middle-aged men and women. It affects men and women equally. The rate of pancreatitis in African Americans is three times higher than in white person. In the United States, the most common cause for women is gallbladder disease or gallstones. The second most common cause is chronic alcohol intake, which is more common in among men. Smoking is an independent risk factor for acute pancreatitis. Biliary sludge or microlithiasis, which is a mixture of cholesterol crystals and calcium salts, is found in 20 to 40 percent of patients with acute pancreatitis. The formation of biliary sludge is seen in patients with bile stasis. Acute pancreatitis attacks are also associated with hypertriglyceridemia. Serum levels of triglycerides about 1000 mg per deciliter. Other less common causes include certain drugs like corticosteroids, thiazide diuretics, oral contraceptives, sulfonamides, and NSAIDs. Metabolic disorders like hyperthyroidism and renal failure and vascular diseases. Pancreatitis may offer may occur after surgical procedures on the pancreas, stomach, duodenum, or biliary tract. Pancreatitis can also occur after endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreatography, ERCP. In some cases, the cause is unknown or idiopathic. Other less common causes of acute pancreatitis include trauma, which may be post-surgical or abdominal, viral infections, like mumps or Coxsackie virus B, HIV, penetrating duodenal ulcers, cysts, abscesses, cystic fibrosis, and Kaposi sarcoma. Pathophysiology. The most common pathogenic mechanism is autodigestion of the pancreas. The etiological factors cause injury to pancreatic cells or activation of the pancreatic enzymes in the pancreas rather than in the intestine. This may be due to the reflux of bile acids into the pancreatic duct through an opening or distended sphincter of ODI. This reflux may be due to blockage created by gallstones. Obstruction of pancreatic ducts results in pancreatic ischemia. The enzyme lipase causes enzymatic fat necrosis of the endocrine and exocrine cells of the pancreas. Fatty acids are released during this lipolytic process which combines with ionized calcium to form a soap-like product. The initial rapid lowering of serum calcium is not compensated by the parathyroid gland readily and because the body needs ionized calcium, hypocalcemia occurs. Inactive trypsinogen, which is a proteolytic enzyme, gets activated to trypsin. Proteolytic activity may lead to thrombosis and gangrene of the pancreas. This can be localized or may involve the entire organ. Trypsin activates elastase, which causes elastic fibers of the blood vessels to dissolve. The necrosis of blood vessels results in bleeding, ranging from minor bleeding to massive hemorrhage of pancreatic tissue. Calacrine causes the release of vasoactive peptides, which contributes to vasodilation and increased vascular permeability resulting in more hemorrhage which can also escape into the retroperitoneal tissue leading to hypovolemic shock and death. The inflammatory process occurs when leukocytes cluster around the hemorrhagic and necrotic areas of the pancreas and a secondary bacterial process leading to separation and abscess formation occurs. This is a visual demonstration of the pathogenic process of acute pancreatitis. The etiological factors, activation of the pancreatic enzymes, 
in the pancreas rather than the intestines and causing injury to the pancreatic cells and the autodigestive effects of the pa of different pancreatic enzymes. The pathophysiological involvement of acute pancreatitis is classified as either mild pancreatitis, also known as edematous or interstitial pancreatitis, or severe pancreatitis, also called necrotizing pancreatitis. In severe pancreatitis, permanent decreases in endocrine and exocrine function occurs in approximately half of affected patients. Patients with severe pancreatitis are also at risk for developing pancreatic necrosis, organ failure, and septic complications, which results in a 25% mortality rate. This is a picture of an acute pancreatitis. The pancreas appears edematous and is commonly hemorrhagic. <coughs> Clinical manifestations of acute pancreatitis. Abdominal pain is a predominant manifestation of acute pancreatitis. The pain is due to distension of the pancreas, peritoneal irritation, and obstruction of the biliary tract. The pain is usually located in the left upper quadrant, but it may be in the mid epigastrium. It commonly radiates to the back because of the retroperitoneal location of the pancreas. The pain has a sudden onset and is described as severe, deep, piercing, continuous, and steady. The pain is aggravated by eating and frequently has its onset when the patient is recumbent. It is not relieved by vomiting. Other clinical manifestations include flushing, cyanosis, and dyspnea. The patient may assume various positions involving flexion of the spine or the fetal position in an attempt to relieve the severe pain. Other manifestations include nausea and vomiting, low-grade fever, leukocytosis, hypotension, tachycardia, and jaundice. Abdominal tenderness with muscle guarding is common. Bowel sounds may be decreased or absent. Paralytic ileus may occur and causes marked abdominal distension. The lungs are frequently involved with crackles present. Intravascular damage from circulating trypsin may cause areas of cyanosis or greenish to yellow dis brown di discoloration of the abdominal wall. Other areas of ecchymosis are the flanks, which is also referred to as the Turner's sign, a bluish flank discoloration, and the periumbilical area, which is referred to as the Cullen sign, and these result from seepage of blood-stained exudate from the pancreas and may occur in severe cases. Shock may result from hemorrhage into the pancreas, toxemia from the effect from the activated pancreatic enzymes, or hypovolemia as a result of fluid shift into the retroperitoneal space. <coughs> the complications of acute pancreatitis. Two significant local complications of acute pancreatitis are pseudocyst and abscess. A pancreatic pseudocyst is an accumulation of fluid, pancreatic enzymes, tissue debris, and inflammatory exudates surrounding, surrounded by a wall. Manifestations of pseudocyst are abdominal pain, palpable epigastric mass, nausea, vomiting, and anorexia. The serum amylase level frequently remains elevated. CT, MRI, and endoscopic ultrasonography or EUS may be used in the detection of a pseudocyst. The cyst usually resolve spontaneously within a few weeks but may perforate causing peritonitis or rupture into the stomach or the duodenum. Treatment options include surgical drainage procedure, percutaneous catheter placement and drainage, and endoscopic drainage. A pancreatic abscess is a collection of pus. It, re it results from extensive necrosis in the pancreas. 
it may become infected or perforate into adjacent organs. Manifestations of an abscess include upper abdominal pain, abdominal mass, high fever, and leukocytosis. Pancreatic abscesses necessitate prompt surgical drainage to prevent sepsis. The main systemic complications of acute pancreatitis are pulmonary, which is pleural effusion, atelectasis, pneumonia, and acute respiratory distress syndrome, or ARDS, and cardiovascular complications and tetany caused by hypocalcemia. The pulmonary complications are due to the passage of exudate containing pancreatic enzymes from the peritoneal cavity through the transdiaphragmatic lymph channels. When hypocalcemia occurs, it is a sign of severe disease. It is due in part to the, combina to the combining of calcium and fatty acids during fat necrosis. <coughs> Monitor for signs and symptoms of hypocalcemia, including Chostex sign, Truzo sign, paresthesias in sarcomural and acral areas, which is the fingers and the toes, muscle stiffness, myalgia, spasms, seizures, and EKG changes, which in particular is prolonged QT interval. The primary diagnostic tests for acute pancreatitis or serum amylase and lipase measurements. The serum amylase level is usually elevated early and remains elevated for 24 to 72 hours. Serum lipase level, which is also elevated in acute pancreatitis, is an important test because other disorders like mumps, cerebral trauma, and renal transplantation may increase serum amylase levels. Other findings include an increase in liver enzymes, triglycerides, glucose, and bilirubin levels, and a decrease in the calcium level. Diagnostic evaluations of acute pancreatitis is also directed at determining the cause. Abdominal ultrasonography, X-ray, or contrast-enhanced CT scanning can be used to identify pancreatic problems. CT scan is the best imaging test for pancreatitis and related complications such as pseudocysts and abscesses. ERCP is, can be used, although ERCP can cause acute pancreatitis in some cases. Additional studies including endoscopic ultrasonography or EUS, Magnetic resonance cholangiopancreatography, which is MRCP, and angiography may also be done. Chest x rays may show pulmonary changes, including atelectasis and pleural effusions.